Oh, spitting image in the, in the 90s. Yes, I joined in 1994. It was my first job on television. And a very, uh, a very interesting time. John Major was the Prime Minister. Yes, and he would speak in this very uh, amiable manner. In this sort of... T Sometimes if you made him a bit too aggressive, he'd go to Michael Caine. And then you'd go back to John Major, and then if he went a bit too fluffy, he'd turn into Julian Clary. And that sort of spawned this thing that many Impressionists talk about, voice neighbours, where one merges into another. Uh, but yeah, very interesting, uh, very interesting time uh, in the 90s there. I think Victor Meldry was the biggest sort of character in the sort of like uh, BBC One canon at that time. And there he would be talking in a million miles an hour and you'd never think he'd stop and he'd be completing the sentence at this great, great speed and he'd never run out of oxygen until right at the end when he'd sort of sound like that. But they were exhausting characters, but very interesting. Yeah, the 90s. Nothing defines an era more than the, the people who the Impressionists choose to do. You know, those front of mind type of characters, the big recognisable ones. Yes, after, uh, after spitting image, um, I moved to London after that and did quite a lot of work on Capital Radio. Worked with Steve Penk at Capital Radio, did that phone call where I pretended to be William Haig and was put through to the then Prime Minister, uh, Tony Blair. Uh, yes, uh, that wonderful accent of William Haig where you have a, uh, a pint of mild, or many of them. Um, and then I worked with uh, Radio One quite a lot with, uh, with Chris Moyles. And Dead Ringers started then on Radio 4, 20 years ago. Um, topical comedy show, a satire show that used impersonations as the way it communicated. And this was the time that Tony Blair first became Prime Minister, setting a new tone altogether. Ha 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 ha, Alistair Campbell up on the wall there. Hello, ha 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 ha. Um, and that just really kicked the door down in terms of characters. Um, very strident. Very different to John Major, who had gone before. And then it led us to the time of George W. <laughs> that was Russell Crowe, another great character of that time. Yeah, also, Ricky Gervais. Yeah, OK, that was one of those. When Dead Ringers moved to TV, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, oh. Disrespectful, OK. Ooh. Um, <laughs> yeah, Dead Ringers moved to TV in 2002 which was lovely apart from, you know, you could then do, apart from the satire and, and, and the topicality, all the visual jokes you could, you could bring in. You know, Ozzy Osbourne sort of like, and that, that feeling he brings to the world. Or, you know, the scowling of Russell Crowe. Or, okay, the twitches of Ricky Gervais, yeah. Oh, little glance to camera. Yeah. Um, it did open it all up. I did a series on ITV, the impressionable John Coleshaw. Also, newsoids, head cases, sort of very caricatured animation, um, topical comedy shows. Uh, 2D TV was another one. Um, it's always very a, a, a great honour appearing on the Parkinson show. A chair is very similar to this one, and of course, you, you, you're, you're very nervous being on the Parkinson show because of all of the great, great characters who've appeared on there b b before you. You know, you know, you know, you know, yes, 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 you do. But Parky is so skilled. The first time he asks a question, he's so relaxed and so skilled, he just turns off any nervousness straight away. Um, so, yeah, that was uh, a lovely show to do. Yeah, the Royal Variety performance, 2001 and 2002. Um, it's interesting being that nervous. <laughs> I did a show of... Um, a birthday show for the Prince's Trust in honour of uh, the Prince of Wales's birthday. And of course, you know, Prince Charles does the line-up. And uh, yes, I, uh, I was very, very grateful that you, uh, you went easy on me. You didn't impersonate me. I said, thank you. The cuffling fiddle, cuffling fiddle. Bleh. Then off he goes. And then ha Prince Harry, who was also there, said, I can't believe you. You totally should have gone for him. Can't believe you didn't do that. You know? <laughs> Keeping track on the, on all the characters, all the new ones that come along, you never have to go looking for them. They are always there. It just when you're casually watching the news, someone will appear. Of course, we have the Donald. He is usually the character who most of us will do first in the act very soon, straight away. 
Very smart guy, very smart. Sort of gives you a neck ache, all that gurning. I was like, of course, boys as well, they're very uh, so obvious. Uh, I, 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 reaching out in this way, I don't know whether he is trying to fend off uh, the adversaries or, or pleading to be rescued. <laughs> Noises are more effective with Boris than actual words. I find it. I, 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 adopt your Neanderthal stoop. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So those are usually the characters you, you go to first. Um, and you, ne you never have to look out for those, those new characters. It's a bit like a game of chess. You're always thinking two, three moves ahead, wondering who's going to come next. And you're looking for all of those interesting characters on the horizon, those that are most characterful. Uh, Richard Bergen, Labour politician, he sort of sounds like someone off Gogglebox. So, you know, if he sort of uh, adopts a more prominent position, you know, that might be quite interesting. Uh, Rob Peston is also very interesting, talking as though he's been recorded on a tape machine that's not working properly. And, of course, very similar to Jeremy Vine, Two Gears. This is sort of the tone for those very sensitive stories. But then he'll go all outlandish. The body language very still, so the voice can dance about. <laughs> P Peston and Jeremy Vine are rather like some years ago. You had the characters Alan Wicker, David Frost, Jeremy Vine and Robert Peston are in today's category for that. Like every DJ's kind of got to have the Beatles in their record collection. Every impersonator needs those, <laughs> along with Boris and Trump in, in their box. Certain guys, it, it takes a little longer to get to know them. Uh, Keir Starmer, I think, he's in that process now where he's being decoded. You know, he's quite still, a little bit bunged up, sort of sounds like he needs, you know, almost second class return to Dottingham, please, but not quite. Uh, so he's under decoding, he's under review. He'll be, well, you know, we'll work out what's funny there. Um, but really what you're looking for are those things you can exaggerate and stretch to make funny those little absurd things about people that perhaps the audience don't realize that they've noticed about those people you're looking for those to stretch so you have an element of surprise and you have a, oh yes they do do that they do do that um i noticed uh, simon cowell quite sibilant always this kind of sort of choppy hand gesture he says um you know what I think we found a star here. I think that was really good. And these are my teeth. Made by Armitage Shanks, who are a manufacturer of bathrooms. With a corporate booking, I, I, I love them because it's like gate crashing someone else's industry for one night only. And you get to know the team, you get to know how they work together, the things they talk about. You just sort of get the sense of what's going on. And you learn things about industries you had no idea of before. And it is, it's like, it's like a day trip into someone else's industry. And I always like to join in for the dinner, just to get to know everybody, get the sense of the room, get the atmosphere, so that when you go on the stage, you're not a stranger, you're, you're part of the team, you're part of the family, and you'll have noticed little things that can work in. You, you might have noticed the, um, the chairperson, the boss making the speech. You can copy that, uh, which the crowds always love when you do that, that goes a long way. Um, and it's just, it's very rewarding. It is, it's, it's and they're very well prepared, the, these events, you know, the, uh, the production teams who put them on technically and, and so on, they do make it easy for you. Um, so, yeah, I would join for the dinner, get up there, do my 20-minute uh, comedy routine straight into the awards and make the crowd feel special. Um, this Any particular award ceremony is probably, it'll be the Oscars for that industry. Perhaps the biggest event in the entire year. So you, you've got to make that team feel special. You've got to, you've got to elevate that feeling and give it, you know, just give it some pace and some punch and um, do that in a, you know, a, a friendly way. 
So I, I always like it when at the end of a, a, a do, if people are saying, thank you so much, that was absolutely, w w thank you, to leave them happy, then I find that very rewarding.